Hey, this is Annie. Oh, hey, this is Samantha. And welcome to Stuff Mom Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio's How Stuff Works. I just, I just waved at you. Did you notice this? I always notice when you wave at me. I, just, I, I was like, hey. As if we like, haven't been right. speaking for 20 <laughs> minutes before this. I appreciated it. I you know, it's it. like I've not seen you today. Hey. Okay, I'm done now. Yeah. Well, I am really grateful for the wave, and uh, it's a, it's a positive thing. Thank you. Yeah. And it kind of relates to body positivity. Yeah. Well, the word. It, it, the we'll word go, does. We'll go it. with the, we'll go go with with the word. It. Thank you. Um, which is what we're talking about today. And before we get into it, trigger warning for um, eating disorders. Right. Uh, and this. This episode is sort of a continuation of our episode that we did around what is normal, and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of the body positivity movement and how it has been largely usurped by corporations. Yeah, and we wanted to come back and talk a bit more because we definitely have had conversations among ourselves as well as hearing from listeners about the pros and cons of body positivity and the whole movement. And we say this at the beginning, we're not here to argue with people and their opinions of other people's bodies. We're here to have a conversation of the bigger picture of the us versus them mentality that has always been an underlying issue and the ease of taking advantage of the conversation for power or money. So with that... Definition! Definition time. Body positivity or body pause essentially means accepting your body and recognize that your worth comes from somewhere else. It doesn't mean you feel super positive about every part of your body or super positive about your body all the time. It doesn't mean that you're not taking care of yourself, although ultimately a stranger's health isn't really your business. Yeah, can we say that one more time? Not it really is your not business. your business. <laughs> <laughs> These days, because the body positivity waters have gotten so muddied by corporations and the mainstream, some prefer the term fat acceptance or body acceptance or body neutrality, and we're going to get all into that. Um, but first, we wanted to look at why... It matters. A study of 318 students found that by the third grade, 45% of American students reported wanting to be thinner, and 37% had already tried to lose weight. So third grade. How old were you in third grade? Nine. Right. Can we have that conversation once again? Haven't even hit puberty Mm -hmm. and already talking about weight loss. I was trying to lose weight in third grade for sure. I was not eating... I will say that was not me, but I think that's partially because I was still trying to learn English, so. (laughs) Yes, you know. (laughs) And trying to fit in with white peoples. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Another part of this, of why it matters, is not being believed at the doctor. We had a whole episode on that a while back, but your weight uh, often is pointed to as the culprit for any medical issue. You're dismissed as it's this. Right. I was um, considering that this, because, you know, I love some WebMD, and between I had some... um, issues. I told you a lot while ago mm-hmm. and everyone else that I was dying as well as there's been an amazing problem with my hip or something where I can't walk straight <laughs> anymore. Oh, dear. But all of that had something about weight, every single bit of it and made me really self-conscious. I'm like, am I that that overweight? Is this what the problem is? And I'm having to go back and forth about my health and having just went to my um, doctor and getting a physical a few months ago and nothing being a problem. So, mm-hmm. but still, because it's right there, that's the first thing that pops into your mind. Yeah. And uh, I had to go to, I mean, years of physical therapy for what I've done to myself ultimately. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> they, it was something that came up for me as well. Like, maybe it's your weight. Like, right, what? Right. What? Why? I've been running every day for like exactly. 20 years. Exactly. <laughs> it's the weight. It's not 20 years. That's an exaggeration, but it was a long time. A long time. It's like 11. It's over a decade. Um, Okay, but yes. So not being believed at the doctor, as we said in our past episode, this directly leads to negative health outcomes, including wrongful death. Right. And I believe um, the average for a woman who is overweight uh, is nine years to get diagnosed. It might be longer than that. Um, Studies have found that medical professionals are more likely to label fat patients as noncompliant, weak-willed, or overindulgent in their patient histories. Wow. Like, I'm just not sure why that would be coming up, but okay. Mm-hmm. Another study found that after a celebrity is fat shamed, a spike of about 90,000 women voiced an increase in anti-fat thoughts and attitudes. Of course. 
And yet another study found that hiring managers were extremely harsh when judging overweight female candidates. Of the descriptors given, these women were the most likely to be described as lazy and ranked second to last in hireability. And there are no federal protections in place for weight discrimination. I wonder what that would look like if we did have federal protection. What would be the title of it? I don't know. Some mm-hmm. good listeners out there, somebody Give get me working a good title, on it. Right? Yeah. yeah. So when researching this, it was just fascinating just to see the back and forth between how great this is to how dangerous this is. There's a lot of opinion and even revamping again, as we said about instead of body positivity, fat acceptance mm-hmm. and the conversation. And we'll talk about you'll talk a little more about this later about of privilege. Yeah. What this looks like in having privilege in your body shape. I guess is that the word. Yeah. Yeah, body shape. And I think it's so important to understand health versus image expectations. We, when we put it simply, the damage of the shame and control, and not that we need to reopen the conversation of mental health and body dysmorphia, and, but there's this whole talk about going from beyond just what you want it to be, your expectations, or your overall seeing in the world what you think is a perfect body or what you wish to look like or what you wish to have or what you wish you didn't have to talking about the need for self-love and self-care. And that's completely different than just, hey, I want to look better or I want to accept better. And we wanted to share a brief history right. of, of body positivity and the body positive movement. It started out as a small radical sect, part of the fat acceptance movement in the 1960s. The same decade, the National Association to Aid Fat Americans came together, and the pioneers behind it were mostly black and queer. It involved public protest against discrimination, capitalism, specifically against the diet industry itself. It was about radical self-love, in the face of all of this messaging, trying to destroy it when you had a body that was not traditionally beautiful, that did not conform. Capitalism was telling you, you are ugly, you need to change how you look. And you were saying, no, screw you. Yay. Mm -hmm. Then, skipping ahead to 1996 and treatment for anorexia recovery, uh, that's when we get the phrase body positivity. A psychotherapist who had struggled with an eating disorder herself founded thebodypositive.org. Its whole thing was shifting focus from disordered eating and exercising um, to achieve weight loss, to get it away from that whole thing. Uh, Take one of their core competencies, quote, uncover the messages that have influenced your relationships with your body, food, and exercise, and develop a weight-neutral, health-centered approach to self-care to become the authority of your own body by sorting out facts from distorted societal myths about health, weight, and identity. But... What happens when the mainstream, and particularly corporations, get a hold of an idea without the proper context? We'll get into that after a quick break for a word from our sponsor. And we're back. Thank you, sponsor. So... What is the problem here? Why is it that when you search body positivity, most of the results on the top two pages are the problem with body positivity? Right. The problem is corporate Corporate America. America. Just kidding. But not really. Oh, yeah. No, not a joke. I mean, (laughs) just as corporations have made so much money on dieting culture, self-help culture, beauty culture, they know what is trending and hold tight. I mean, they're smart as hell. They know how it works. And even beyond that, they monetize individuals. And I find that fascinating in itself, how we become so caught up with individual names to push us to some kind of idea or influence us to buy these things. And and it's the YouTubers, it's the social media influencers, which, by the way, I didn't know was a thing until like six months ago, which when we had a little thing, we had a, a beer get together, essentially, mm-hmm. and it was influencers. Yeah. And I had no idea what that meant. And it meant they had to have a certain amount of followings on certain types of things. And I was like, what? Who are you? Why are you so important that you get these free things? It's because you take a picture with an item and people like it? I, oh, damn. I want to be one of those. Recently, I went <laughs> to Hawaii. I get to bring it up again. Yes, I hate you. Um, and when I was filling out the, like, state uh, media form, mm-hmm. there was a section that said, what part of the media are you? And I was fascinated because now there is an influencer Shut section up. to get funding to go visit a state. Blew oh. my mind. I didn't know you can do that. Where can I find up for that? I thought that really cool. You're that. an influencer. 
In 2004, Dove launched their very successful campaign for real beauty, and the core message of which was, women, you shouldn't feel bad about yourselves and how you look. One of the most well-known pieces of this campaign was that commercial, I remember this so well, depicting a time-lapse of photoshopping a woman into an almost unrecognizable, perfect version of herself. The marketing campaign escalated from there. Uh, then there was the one where the, the woman had to choose between a door that read average over the top or the door that read beautiful. Then there was the one where a woman had to describe her face to a sketch artist, and it becomes apparent that she thinks uh, she's hideous and her how she sees herself doesn't match with reality. And the general public opinion was like, yes, finally, just having someone point it out, point out this insidious cultural problem earned Dove all of this praise. Mm -hmm. But who was to blame? They didn't name anybody. They didn't point fingers to a big bad. A big bad. So women were, of course, for thinking that they were ugly in the first place. Right. Shame on you for feeling shame. And Dove is here to save the day. Buy our stuff, please. Please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's not just Dove, of course. Um, seeing the success, uh, companies rushed in to imitate it. Um, and the thing is, it's difficult marketing-wise to be in the beauty industry without convincing people that they need something right. to make themselves look a certain way. These companies helped create that self-hatred for our bodies and then picked up on an opportunity to make more money from the thing that they created, and they changed the conversation all the while washing their hands of any guilt. For instance, some companies have plus-size models in their campaigns but offer no actual plus-size clothing. I love it. They just know it's popular. Uh, fashion shows might do the same thing. It's the bare minimum to look like they're changing when they are not. Right. It's still the same old blame game, but it's with different makeup, as they say. It's mm -hmm. a different lipstick. <sighs> are you talking about the pig of the lipstick? Maybe. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Keep going. <laughs> it's difficult, too, when your company depends on ads to be critical of those companies. For instance, BuzzFeed had to take a piece that was critical of Dove uh, off because they had ad space with right. Dove. And I can't tell you. Uh, I wish I could. No, yeah. no, no. I can't tell you all the back and forth that we go through on this show with our ads teams. Yeah, I think just coming in and having to sit down and listen before I even started was kind of like, oh, damn, this is a whole thing, and it's a constant. I think the whole... And then we have to be really, really vigilant and research everything they send us. Yeah, yeah, and our ads team, they are saints, and they, they are. I feel like we've gone through a journey together. They know so much about us. Yeah. Um, and you'll probably hear ads for exercise and nutrition apps on this very episode, which, again, I like exercising, and I'm all about building healthy habits, but I'm aware of all of these issues that go hand-in-hand hand with being a feminist podcast and eating disorders and body acceptance and the diet and fitness industry. I mean, that goes even just beyond, because it could be nothing to do with fitness, but they represent something outside of what we're talking about in fitness. I know we've had a lot of questions of doing um, vitamin types of things yeah. and you know, all of these that have really nothing to do with necessarily fat and diets. But because they may be a linkage to it, we're like, uh-uh, we can't. We can't. Yeah. It's and that, back and forth. And it's, I feel like the big problem is a lot of times I say I don't want to talk anything about weight loss. It's just that that's what the focus is. That Like, that's the only reason you could be right. wanting to exercise or build better habits, which if that is a healthy side effect of being healthier. <laughs> right. Great. And I think you and I have also talked about the fact that we hate having to have this back and forth but at the same time. We can't be too hypocritical because I do use apps like that and I'm very conscious of who I am. Of course, we talked previously about us having a hard time with our own selves and having yeah. our bodies and trying to maintain a balance for our lives as being a part of the show as well as being just women mm -hmm. in general. And But the, the thing is, like, I do think it's necessary. I was in healthy for yeah. a very, very long time, and that had a lot to do with stress mm -hmm. and stress eating and not having the time to exercise and not having, to, having the time to sleep. Yeah. But having to sometimes learn control through assistance. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, too. Absolutely. Um, and some companies have sworn off Photoshopping 
are headlines promising weight loss. Um, some celebrities post unretouched photos after a magazine does too many touch-ups. Uh, but it is still worth keeping in mind that a lot of celebrities with or without makeup are still professionally beautiful. Right, meaning they get a nice chef coming in and, and yeah. fixing their food that has under 300 calories. Ooh. Uh, and when we see movies with the magical movie makeover implying how ugly this person is, that is a model um, and until she wears better clothes, gets her hair done, and takes off her dang glasses— that's damaging. Right, especially when you're like, that person was never... No. I remember the, <laughs> one of the first times I saw one of those movies, when the magical movie makeover part happened, I was confused. Right, I was too. like, what? I remember that too. I was like, all you did was... She was comb her hair. The whole time. I say, all you did was take her hair out of a ponytail. I don't yeah. understand what's happening. You're remembering a specific example? Yes. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> What? <laughs> Yeah, it didn't make sense to me. And if you start comparing yourself to, uh, I guess this person was ugly who I thought was beautiful the whole time, then that's very bad. Yeah. Damaging. Um, And also, apparently, there are boatloads of tutorials out there teaching folks how to apply makeup and make it look like they haven't so they can still use the hashtag no makeup. Right. Well, I remember seeing something... Well, it's kind of like when you see people going to bed and they wake up oh, yeah. in the TV shows or movies and you see they have lipstick on and mascara and you're like, how the hell were you asleep? Because if that wasn't me, my face would have been covered in all kinds of clown <laughs> yes, stuff, weird. right? And pimples on top of that from wearing sure. that makeup anyway. So that's just, they're all lies. Lies? What? <laughs> um, along with this is the whole phenomenon of society worshiping any woman in the public sphere who dares claim she is, in fact, beautiful or condemns them for it. I used to see this all the time uh, back when, like, I don't know why, but I was reading dating apps. It was for work. But, like, comments on dating apps and when it, someone would say, you're so beautiful, like a man would say that to a woman, and she'd be like, I know, and they'd be like, you bitch! Right. Um, so you can't win again. <laughs> no, that's the thing. Is like, why is it so hard for people to accept other people liking themselves? I know. Uh, and then there's the whole trend of posting fat rolls. Um, but for it to sell, it all revolves around images. And it all depends on beauty being essential for life to have meaning. And then, at the same time, the idea of body positivity and healthy at any size can create another pressure for fat people to live up to when posting anything, having to always be body positive or show pictures of healthy habits, which is just flat out unrealistic for most of us to do that all of the time. And especially marginalized folks to to preempt people on social media from trying to diagnose them or tear them down. Right. There is a lot of pressure around all of this for all of us, but uh, celebrities as well. Right. Um, and there there is a concerned backlash um, saying uh, to body positivity to posting those types of pictures uh, of fat rolls or whatever, that, that it will jumpstart an obesity epidemic. But the data we have, and there is data out there, does not support that in the slightest. One more time. It does not support that. Because I've had so many conversations about you're teaching bad habits yeah. when you say it's okay to be fat. And again, that's not what we're saying. And also, who are you to say who's fat? You're not a damn doctor. Healthy looks different on everybody. So shut up. <laughs> There has been also, um, the, yeah, the, the reverse extremism of it, of criticizing people who lose weight right. for any reason. And yes, absolutely, some reasons are bad, and sometimes good reasons get entangled with bad ones, but not all healthy weight loss is bad. If you're trying to lose weight for a physical aesthetic result, that's not body positive. It doesn't necessarily have to be bad, but it's not body positive. Um, the phrase can be confusing, because positive is in it. Right. Um, but if you make healthy lifestyle changes and weight loss as a result of that, then so be it. Yeah, and one of the articles I found uh, was specific to people feeling guilty for losing weight. Yeah. As well as people feeling like talking about weight loss is negative. Mm -hmm. I think I can absolutely agree with the dynamic of unhealthy conversations that revolve around any obsession. And that goes beyond just weight. Any yeah. obsession for whether it's um, people who get obsessed with CrossFit, people who... I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but there's just a the whole level of people who get obsessed with, I don't know, watching too much TV, too much D&D, &D, hating <gasps> women, any of those things. I know, I stepped on the toes, didn't mm -hmm. I? Um, but I, I also believe in the idea of not being a judge of anyone's body, once again. Like, it's this whole, you can't win, you can't lose. Someone's always going to be unhappy about something. So if you're too much, 
that's un- that's going to make someone, you're, you're too excessive. If you're too little, that's not enough. It's this whole back and forth. And again, this is why I talk about self-care and self-love. You need to be happy with who you are, and you're not always going to be happy all the time. No. <laughs> no, no, no. In general. And so hearing this whole negativity from either side, that's one of the things that we have to meditate through. And I say meditate because you've got to kind of just tune it out. Mm-hmm. Essentially, and I think that's part of the conversation that I would like to have is like, is why do we feel the need to have an opinion about others so often when we obviously it, that stuff also bothers us? That makes sense. Oh yeah, I feel like a lot of times it is ultimately it's about you. A projection, yeah, for sure, for sure. And mm-hmm. I think that's comp part of the things like nothing's ever going to be okay until we f- figure out what's okay with us. Is that very wise? I don't know. Is that a question? (laughs) It's time for another ad break. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back. Thank you, sponsor. So you can be kind to your body and love your body and still want to change things about your body. Change doesn't have to be bad. At the same time, it honestly is hard not to feel self-loathing for our bodies um, or at least uncomfortable with parts of our body when that is the message women are getting all the time, especially women who don't fit the thin cis white mold. And that's the trouble with thinner women getting in on the body positive movement. It decenters. Fat women who face more stigma and systemic discrimination. And and don't get us wrong, you can still be skinny and absolutely feel bad about your body and still internalize all of these messages and want to find something to feel positive about it. Those feelings are completely valid, but thin privilege is reality too. Um, And this whole thing with body positivity reminds me of what happened to Woke, if you remember that episode uh, that I did with Miranda. Um, It just kind of got usurped. Right. Uh, by the mainstream. And we are talking a lot of bad things about body positivity, but it has done um, some good things too, like starting conversations like these, um, more people seeing themselves and others in social media um, and and media at large and and feeling like, oh, I can do that too. I can post pictures too. Um, I can can go out and and be... I, I recently watched Shrill, which kind of deals with a lot of this. Oh, yeah. And just like the 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 pool party episode is so lovely. Yeah. Um, but body positivity has gotten capitalized on and watered down. And we're not having a conversation about what structural change looks like when it comes to accepting all body types, trans, non white queer, fat, disabled. Um, companies have created and profited from maintaining the status quo. We're putting the responsibility of people with bodies that don't conform to that status quo We're putting that pressure to change how they feel about their bodies on them (laughs) without placing any responsibility on the outside forces that impact why they might have that negative self-image. It's wonderful and frankly amazing to feel positive even half the time about a body that does not conform to our status quo, at least in my opinion. But if that body is operating in a system that does not respect it, does not value it, does not view it as human, then... Right. And you're absolutely correct because, again, I think the same conversations need to be had. Again, I know I, I divert, divert a lot, but in general to women against women, femme against femme, um, queer versus queer. Like There's this whole persona that is outside of the actual movement that come in to cause dissent mm-hmm. in order for you to hate your own, essentially, if that makes sense. And, and oftentimes there's this whole us versus them mentality that was never should have been created, but it is profited off of, for sure, as we can see in politics today. Yep. There are good things out there, like uh, uh, if you're looking for them, uh, hashtag body positivity in color, hashtag bad picture Monday, uh, the body is not an apology. And this is a hugely important conversation that impacts safety, moving about in the world, risk of abuse, crimes, and death. And there is no one-size-fits-all solution, just like there is no one-size-fits-all body. So, that's the the negative side of body positivity. Um, And that brings us to the end of our episode. We would love to hear from listeners their thoughts around this, um, things that they do to 
stay positive about their their body. Um, you can email us at stuffmediamomstuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at momstuffpodcast and on Instagram at Stuff Mom Never Told You. Thanks, as always, to our super producer, Andrew Howard. Happy belated birthday, Andrew. Happy belated birthday. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I've Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio's How Stuff Works. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. <laughs> 